Well, our little talk this morning is titled, Look Who Moved In. And we want to think about the Holy Spirit. And specifically, I want to stress the personhood of the Holy Spirit. There are some people, of course, that teach that the Holy Spirit is simply a force used by God to accomplish his ends. But the Bible makes it clear that the Holy Spirit is a person who teaches, who comforts, who guides, who instructs, who does things that only a person can do. And I want to ask three questions of you today as we think about this. The Bible makes it clear that every person who receives Christ as personal Savior also at that moment, upon believing, receives the Holy Spirit of God. And the Apostle Paul makes it clear, he that does not have the Holy Spirit of God is none of his. In other words, doesn't belong to Christ. And by inference, if you do belong to Christ, you do have the Holy Spirit. This is something that is true of this age alone. In other times, the Spirit of God came upon certain individuals to move them in the purposes of God. But when the Lord Jesus went back to heaven, he made the promise that he wouldn't leave us orphans. He wouldn't leave us comfortless. He would send another comforter, and the Greek has another of the same kind, the same kind that he was, that the Holy Spirit, in a sense, would be the representative of Christ in our hearts. We would have an intercessor in the heavens praying us home. We would have an intercessor in the hearts, says Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit, who would be there to vie for us, to help us and encourage us in our lives. So three questions I want to ask in this little session. And the first one is this, did you know that the Spirit prays with us? And I'd like to read a verse or two in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 says, likewise the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit helps our prayer life. Now this little English word helps is actually a very big <laughs> Greek word. And it sounds something like soon anti lambanoahi. All right, so the, the, it's really three words stuck together. Uh, the word for together, uh, plus the word for between or over against, plus the word to support. And it's the picture of two people carrying one load. And so the Holy Spirit himself is there to assist us in effective prayer. Now when we think about the challenges of prayer, uh, what should we pray for? How should we beseech God? It would be a, a very difficult thing for us to know the mind of God sufficiently to ask him the things that we would like to cooperate with him in doing. But what if the mind of God resided in us, right? So the Apostle Paul says, uh, who knows what's really going on inside of a man but the spirit of a man, right? I can smile and not be happy or I can cry crocodile tears and not be sad, but I know how I really feel. Well then, who knows the mind of God but the spirit of God? And because we have the Spirit of God, we also have the mind of God. Now, it doesn't mean that I know at any given time everything that God is thinking. But it means that I have access to that. There was an old preacher, August Van Ryn. Somebody said to him one time, you Christians, you think you know everything. And he said, we don't think we know everything. 
We know we know everything. And then he quoted John, who says in his first epistle, you have an unction or an anointing from the Holy Spirit and you know all things. Well, it doesn't mean that I personally know everything, but it's on a need-to-know basis. Everything I need to know to do the will of God, to live in the purpose of God, to accomplish the objectives of God in my life, all of that information is accessible to me through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit intercedes, says our verse, and, and to intercede means to negotiate on behalf of someone else, to seek the betterment, to act in a positive way for the benefit of someone else. And as I mentioned earlier, we have Christ, he ever lives to make intercession for us, he intercedes in heaven on our behalf. He prays for us even when we don't pray for ourselves. And his prayers match the will of God and are always accomplished. He prays down the blessing of God on his people. But this is a little different. The Holy Spirit doesn't pray for us, the scripture says, as Christ does, but he inspires and directs and qualifies and tweaks our prayers so that they align with the will of God. Our prayers get to heaven in the revised version. So I pray something in foolishness uh, with missing certain pieces to the puzzle. I don't know things uh, that are outside of my range of knowledge, but they're not outside of the range of the Holy Spirit's knowledge. And so I pray some prayer that really doesn't quite line up with the will of God, and the Holy Spirit lays hold of that prayer, and somehow he brings it into alignment with the will of God. There are times when we come before God and we say, Lord, I, f I feel the need to pray. I have no idea what to ask, but I'm going to go ahead and pray anyway. I mean, God has thought of everything, hasn't he? There's not a weak link in the chain. What happens if you're in a situation, you feel a desperate spiritual need, and you come to God and say, I have no idea what to ask for? Is that kind of a mindless prayer? Is that useless? No. Because the Spirit of God takes those groanings and makes them his own. And he translates the longing of our heart into a concrete request. This is exciting, ladies and gentlemen, that when you feel the need to pray and you have no idea what to pray, you get before God and you say, I am so thankful that the Holy Spirit who lives within me knows what I need or knows what, what will answer this, this need. And I'm just asking you, Lord, to take this longing of my heart and translate it into a God-sized prayer, and I'll give you all the glory for the answer. This is amazing. And so, when we get to heaven, and we see what God has done with our sometimes feeble prayer life, listen, this is, this is the work of God, to take up, we weak and struggling creatures, and to accomplish through us the mighty will of God. He has chosen to do that through prayer. I dare say there's hardly a thing done in the universe that isn't done in answer to prayer. But what the Spirit of God does is inspire us to pray, and when we do pray, he then takes that prayer and he manipulates it, he corrects it, he adjusts it so that it exactly fits with the purposes of God. And the question is then, why bother? Why include us in the process? Well, because God wants to include us in the process. There's only one piece of the whole cycle where God moves in our hearts and we ask and God responds and blessing comes and glory goes back to God and thanksgiving in that whole wonderful process. 
The only piece of the pie that I can have a part in is the asking. So he says, ask my father and he will do it for you. Isn't that beautiful?